I had a cold for a couple days, so I've been um, sorting through my seeds and ordering seeds and kind of planting my garden just a little bit. Usually I plant my main crops, you know, everything from the first early greens and roots to peppers and tomatoes, eggplants, stuff like that. I'll get seeded in the greenhouse about the middle of February. Normally, that's at least that's my target date. It's often a little bit late. And honestly, like a week or two either side of that doesn't really matter that much. The only thing I plant earlier would be onions and leeks, which can go in as early as say January 15th. But again, it's fine to plant those around February too. Anyway, I thought it was a good opportunity to just talk about seeds and stuff. And one main thing I wanted to do is just give a shout to my favorite seed company, which is Fedco, F-E-D-C-O. They're just a really cool company. Um, they're real supportive of, you know, sustainable agriculture and organic farmers. They are definitely aligned with farmers and growers. Um, rather than just being a seed company that serves them, they're more like an outgrowth of them. They also have um, seed potatoes, fruit trees, and rootstock, I think, and scion wood. So pretty cool. You can check them out online. Unfortunately, I don't have a catalog to show you. They have uh, Their catalog is real plain. It's just like a newsprint catalog, but pretty thick, and it's entertaining reading. But if you really like pouring through a huge pile of seed catalogs, like it's porn and looking at all the flowery descriptions and like being convinced that this is the next, you know, best variety. And then the one after that's also the next best variety and ending up spending, you know, over a hundred dollars on seed every year, then it may not be for you. But if you're a real practical type of gardener and you want a good quality seed at a good price, they also have small quantities. You can spend like under $2 for a, pa a small packet of seed to try things out and then, you know, go up from there if you want or just save your own seed. Speaking of which, um, you know, I save a lot of seed, uh, quite a bit, and some of it's getting kind of old. I need to get on it and, and uh, save new seed for certain things. Like here's my Tushan carrot, that's from 2013. I mean, this is something that I just, you know, I, I went through a lot of different carrots trying to find something that I really, really liked. And this is the one that rose to the top over and over again. So I've been saving seed for that for some years. This is from 2013, like I said. So I should really save seed for that this year again, because carrot seed doesn't keep great. And there's a whole bunch of other varieties too that uh, are in that same category. Bronze Arrow Lettuce is very good. Um, that's a winner around here and a lot of people around here grow it. Of course, my Bulgarian Giant Leeks. That's um, you know a real winner that I've been working on for a while. We just saw a video about that. Hailstone Radish. I really like this radish. It's a large, relatively large uh, salad radish, mild flavor typically, and the greens, are, instead of being all hairy, they're actually really smooth and succulent and good for salads and stuff. I'll just sometimes eat them in the garden um, or put them in a salad. This is Ruby Streaks, which is a purple streaked or red streaked Mizuna, so it's like a mustard green. Easy to grow, very tasty, and it looks really cool. Vortex pole bean. Uh, this is a real favorite of mine. And, you know, a lot of these varieties basically fall into the classification of they're good enough that I don't feel a need to keep looking for more. And, you know, you'll find a bunch of people that feel that way about Vortex pole bean. This is a pea I've been growing for a while. I haven't really trialed and compared a lot of peas, but it does pretty good. It's a green arrow, it's called. So I'll save seeds from this. What I'll usually do is I just pick the peas until a bunch of them are, you know, there's not very many left and they're kind of getting overgrown. And then I just let the rest of them go and then try to go through and pick the pods that I think look more like the pods I want. You know, um, that's the only selection I do. So eventually with that kind of sloppy technique, the variety will start to run down, you know, if you're not careful. But that's okay because you can get new seed eventually and in the meantime you have, you know, free seed. I save lots of um, tomato seeds, Paul Robeson, Zapotec, those are a couple favorites of mine. Uh, Blue Beach, which I actually ran out of and it seems to be kind of hard to locate now. I could probably find it, but I'll have to, you know, do an entire order of just one seed and pay shipping, which is a pain. Burpee's Butterbush, this is something I used to grow more. It's a dwarf butternut squash. 
So the vines are only maybe four feet long or even like just four or five feet in diameter or something. You can definitely keep them in a, like a, a regular wide uh, garden bed, like a four foot garden bed. And they produce small butternut squash that are about right for say two people. The other squash I grow is Burgess's Buttercup and I've trialed that against tons of different winter squash over and over and over again and it always rises to the top. Same thing with uh, Detroit Red Beet. It's just an excellent beet. And um, for a red beet, you know, it's probably possible to beat it, but I'm not sure. And again, there's not a lot of reason to keep looking. I did displace my usual Laurentian rutabaga with this Colet Vert, which is um, a French heirloom. And it seemed really excellent. There's several rutabagas now that I kind of want to plant side by side and compare uh, all three of them together to figure out which one is going to be, you know, the one for me. But I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being this one. And if you want to get into seed saving, there's it's really easy to do um, as long as you just stick to just start saving the easiest stuff. Tomatoes, most of them won't outcross, so you can just take the fruit, uh, squish out the seeds onto a paper towel, let them dry, and you know, fold it up and write on it. And it's literally that easy. Lettuce um, doesn't cross very easy. If you have wild lettuce, they recommend that you, you know, move it so many feet away, but it's really not a big deal. So you could just pick out your best lettuce heads that go to flower the latest and um, let them go to seed. It's better to save a few of them, but if you don't, it's not a big deal because again, you can just buy a new seed if um, you need to. So it's while it might be best to save seed from six or seven plants or six or eight plants, if you're just doing some quick home seed saving, just save one plant and plant it. And if it does well for you, then you can keep doing that. And if it doesn't, then you start over and get some fresh seed. So this is the best reference I've seen on seed saving. I'm sure there's lots of great websites and stuff, and it's not like I've looked for a book. It's kind of like the same thing with my Burgess Buttercup squash. It's like I'm done looking for something better because, you know, it's good enough. And this is what I tell people for seed saving is get this book. You don't need to know everything about seed saving. You just say, oh, I want to save a seed for this, and then you look it up and see how to do it, and then you just do it. So, uh, yeah, this is a good book seed to seed. The only thing that bothers me is this picture is upside down and it's not like I can't tell that it's upside down. I don't know how they manage that. See, that annoys me because I'm weird. <clears throat> okay, well, I just wanted to say a couple things there about seeds and seed saving. Check out Fedco Seeds and get started seed saving by just saving the simplest things. If you only have one variety of radish, just let them, and no wild radishes around, uh, just let some of them go to seed. Pick out like 8 to 12 of your best radishes and just let them run. Do their thing and harvest the seed. Same thing with mustards. You know, there's certain things that will cross with other things, and there are certain things that won't. Again, you can just look that information up when you need it, and then, you know, you do that once, and then you kind of probably will remember it and know what to do the next time. It shouldn't be intimidating to save seeds and learn to do that because it honestly, it just isn't. And certain things are, well, you can just skip those things, you know, just don't do those things. But most things are actually pretty easy as long as you're only growing one variety. If you're not, they may cross, they may not. It just depends on what, what the vegetable is. So I'm looking forward to having a much better garden this year. Although I have to say since, um, observing my biochar beds. I just don't even want to plant in regular soil anymore. So I'm trying to think about how I can amend most of the garden with charcoal. But on the other hand, I'm probably going to move that garden. So that's a huge investment to be making in an area that may or may not be growing a lot of stuff or I don't really know. I have to think about that more because I, I don't think I can pull off moving the garden this year. Not to mention that there's no water source where I want to move the garden to until uh, we get a pump and storage tank together. Okay, till later.